Hello guys and welcome to my new video. So today I'm going to be doing an overview of the best spec slash classes that are available in World of Warcraft. So we'll be looking at the best tanks, the best DPS, the best healers, and we'll be using multiple parameters to decide which spec is the best. Uh, some of it is going to include my personal opinions, but they're going to be based on heroic mythic and Taurus logs. They're going to be based on mythic plus high key participation on certain abilities that are just OP. Uh, so this review is going to take into account Antorus raids and Mythic plus dungeons. So we're, we're going to be looking at certain classes that can do both really well. When you look at things like Vengeance Demon Hunters, if you look at them, they, they're actually really extremely strong for Mythic plus, extremely strong for high Mythic plus keys, but for really high Mythic Antorus progression, there, there were very few Vengeance Demon Hunters included. So they might be very strong for Mythic Plus, but they're not very strong for high-end progression, and therefore they might not make the list. So you have to keep that in mind. This is an overall performance review of all the classes, of all the specs that are available in the game. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the specs available. I'm going to go through the ones that I feel are extremely, extremely strong right now. You have to keep in mind, I'm looking at the high-end progression. I'm looking at the really high Mythic Plus keys. If you are not looking to push them, if you are not looking to push high-end progression, just play the class that you enjoy the most. You, this won't affect you that much. You won't have to worry about it. If you're not looking to push really high-end progression, just I iterate again. Just play the class that you enjoy the most. But if you're looking to see what classes are performing really well in high-end, this video might help you out. So, first of all, let's look at the DPS. Um, and we're going to be looking at the single target, we're going to be looking at the AoE, we're going to be looking at the utility in the Mythic Plus. And there are two classes, one melee, one range, that really come to mind when you think overpowered right now. So the first class I'm going to be looking at is Windwalker Monks. Windwalker Monks, from one of the worst classes in the previous patches, or one of the worst classes considered, um, they have become one of the strongest melee DPS and one of the strongest DPS in the game right now. You can see you can see that their single target, the AoE, is really strong. Um, with their tier 21, when it's combined with the legendary helm, the wind blows, it makes them one of the strongest DPS in the game. And if you look through the Pirates, a lot of the Windwalkers will be using tier 21 with the legendary, the wind blows. And they are passing extremely, extremely high. If you look for single target fights like Garoti, Wardbreaker, very matches, you see Windwalkers doing extremely, extremely well. For AoE fights like NR, they're doing extremely well as well. In Mythic... Plus, now in Mythic Plus, uh, Windwalkers are somewhat unrepresented. There's not that many Windwalker passes for Mythic Plus, but if you look at the highest keys done in the world, if you look at the highest, like we're talking about 26, 27, 25 keys, a lot of them, or actually most of them, will have at least one Windwalker Monk. Windwalker Monks are really strong right now. They have a strong single target, strong AoE, good utility, AoE stone, one of the most mobile classes in the game super mobile and in my personal opinion one of the most fun classes to play extremely fun rotation extremely fun way of dealing with aoe and single target so windwalkers have become <laughs> from one of the worst classes to probably one of the best classes in the game right now if you look at the high-end progression in Antorus, uh, if you look at the parses if you look at uh, mythic plus and they are really extremely strong now if we look at the ranged one range class comes out in particular as extremely, extremely strong, and that is Affliction Warlocks. Affliction Warlock AoE has been just insane. Now, their single target is probably not as strong as uh, Windwalker Monk, or not as strong as some of the other classes, like Enhancement Shamans and things like that. Enhancement Shamans have an extremely strong single target. Uh, but Antorus is extremely favorable towards dot classes. Fights like Fellhounds, Enar, Antoran High Command, Coven of Shivara. Kuvana Shvara, first of all, is, there's no melee, melee allowed at all in Mythic Progression, but whatever. There's so many dot fights in Antorus, and in those dot fights, Affliction Warlocks are just dominating. Fights like Fellhounds, Enar, Sh Shivara, like the damage meters, it's only Affliction Warlocks at the top. They're just like, and by a large margin, by a really extremely large margin, Affliction Warlocks are at the top, and they're doing extremely well. For multi-dot scenarios they're doing really really well and now when you look at mythic plus keys 
Affliction Warlocks or Warlocks in general are one of the highest... Uh, they ha Warlocks have the highest class participation for 25 plus keys, for 20 plus keys. Uh, there's so many Warlocks in those keys, it's just insane. Uh, and mainly it's because of their su self-sustain. They're, the, they're the class that's considered that you don't need to heal because their self-sustain is incredibly overpowered. You can see... You can see this in example where there were multiple ones with four Warlocks and one uh, Blood DK tank. There was no healer in this and they were doing like plus 22 keys. Warlocks just don't require a healer. They just don't, don't require a healer. And things like amazing, amazing uh, sustain, amazing DPS, battle res, that's going to change in 7.35 and things like that. Uh, so battle res will kind of lose a little value. Makes them one of the best choices. For mythic plus dungeons, for extremely high mythic plus dungeons, for AOE fights in uh, in Antorus, and that makes them as one of the strongest range class, and if not one of the strongest DPS class right now in the game. So, and after that, after these two classes, the balance between other classes is there isn't much difference. There's a lot of other classes that can like things like balance druids, rogues, hunters, and warriors, and things like that. There's, there isn't a huge difference between them. It's mainly affliction warlocks and Windwalker monks that are kind of above everyone else at the moment because of how well Antorus is suited to them, how well Mythic Plus content is suited to them as well based on their utility, DPS, sustain and things like that. So let's look at the healer performance and let's look at the best healers that are available. So first of all, if you're looking to raid Antorus, healer balance has never been better than it is right now. If you're looking to raid on Taurus, you can play any healing class right now. There is no best healer, there is no worst healer. Every healer is doing extremely well. They're very close together in on Taurus. It, it's, it's insanely good. The healer balance is probably the best out of any other roles. Healer balance, especially when it comes to on Taurus. Now, if your guild needs like a tank healer, of course, you probably will go a holy paladin. If you're guild requires some cheese mechanics and you need spirit link you'll go as a restoration shaman because they provide utility and uh, holy palins provide a niche tank healing um, performance kind of deal so there is some kind of a uh, favorability towards some certain classes but all healers are doing extremely well so in order to determine the best healer we have to look at the mythic plus content which healers are doing better in mythic plus which healers are doing worse so for for the longest time like first of all when we look at the mythic plus participation, we have to consider that their disc priests and mystery monks are the least played classes based on the Antorus parses because it's really hard to actually determine the parses. Uh, so disc priests and mystery there's not that many of them in the game right now. And when you look at the mythic plus participation, you have to consider that as well. But for really high keys, we're talking about 25 plus keys, world first keys. 26 27 28 is really only two healing specs that are in there which is restoration druid and holy paladin and uh, their survivability their utility is in really high keys you need to survive like one shot mechanics and holy paladins and resto druids can do that really well they have certain utilities that can avoid certain mechanics and, and those two classes are really really prevalent now if you look at 20 plus keys uh, the, the class balance is a lot different a lot more healers coming in so, if I have to decide on which are the best healers, you can't look at the Antorus because the healing balance is amazing in Antorus. If you look at Mythic Plus, if you look at extremely high Mythic Plus, yeah, Restoration Druids and Holy Paladins are probably the best. But even at high keys, like 20 plus keys, every healer can do really, really well. If I'm really going to be strict about this, Resto Druids and Holy Paladins would win. In terms of their performance in raids and mythic plus and extremely high mythic plus but honestly every healer is doing really really well right now uh, but if i'm being very strict holy pilot and rest of druid just have that tiny little edge for the extremely high mythic plus keys now if you're looking for the tank balance and the tank balance is quite hard to uh, understand or quite hard to determine we have to look at the world first, like Agrimar, Argus or whatever, world first kills. We have to look at the top five guilds, which tanks they chose to choose to go with. Uh, and this is a prime example where Vengeance Demon Hunters might be extremely good for Mythic Plus. And you see a lot of Vengeance Demon Hunters in extremely high 25, 26, 27 uh, keys. 
But if you look at the top end guilds in Antorus, Vengeance Demon Hunters are basically unrepresented and there is very, very few of them. Um, and this is a prime example where Vengeance Demon Hunters might be great for Mythic Plus, but, you know, for high end, it's not the best. It's not, it's not going to be a mistake for me for saying that Brewmaster Monks, Blood Decays and Garden Druids were probably the most commonly picked for really high end Antorus fights. Brewmaster Monks, Blood Decays and Garden Druids that combination, there were like for example, there were two blue decays for Agrima because Agrima requires uh, the mass grip uh, or Gorefield's grasp or whatever. Um, that combination was used a lot. Protection warriors and protection paladins, there were quite a few of them, but we saw them in more of the niche fights. For example, on fights like Vari Matras, where uh, protection warriors inspiring presence, which heals other members based on the damage they deal, inspiring presence could mean that your protection warrior would be topping the healing meters. Which makes it extremely, extremely strong, especially for scenarios where you might want to tree heal the fight. So, uh, protection warriors and protection pilots could be seen more of a niche pick, but that's at a very high end progression. If you're just doing mythic progress right now, any tank will do well. But at the very top end progression, Brewmaster Monks, Blood Decays, Garden Jewels were really, really strong. Broom there were extreme amount of Brewmaster Monks in mythic Argus kills because Brewmaster Monks could kind of help. The raid to cheese uh, certain mechanics so i so saw brewmaster monks as well it's not uncommon to see like two brewmaster monks or like two guardian jewels and things like that they were really really strong in mythic and Taurus progression now if we look at mythic plus it's a lot of it's a lot different like i said vengeance demon hunters extremely extremely strong a lot of them were used in 25 26 27 keys blood decays have the highest 25 plus key representation Blood Decays basically, as you saw in the video previously where there was 4 Warlocks, 4 Affliction Warlocks and a 1 Blood Decay. Blood Decays require very little external healing. They can base, they don't really require a healer, they can heal up themselves. And in Mythic Plus that is extremely strong. If you're running with a Blood Decay as a healer, you can opt in to run a more DPS oriented spec or put on some DPS gear and start actually putting out more DPS instead of healing the tank. So. It is extremely strong in Mythic Plus content. They have the highest representation. Um, but you also can see that Vengeance Demon Hunters are strong. Even there's a lot of, there's a decent amount of protection paladins in extremely high Mythic Plus keys as well. So the balance here is a lot different. You could say that, first of all, if you're doing like a plus 20 key, any tank can do really, really well. If you're looking at an extremely high keys, the tank balance gets a lot smaller. Or there's a lot there's only a few classes that can do really well if i'm being extremely picky again if i'm looking at high on taurus progression and if i'm looking at high mythic plus key progression blood decays are extremely strong on both blood decays are extremely strong on both but honestly a lot of the tank a lot of the tanks can do any of the mythic plus keys the balance is pretty decent um but like I said, if I'm being extremely strict, I would say Blood Decays is the only tank that's really strong for a Mythic and Taurus progression and really strong for Mythic Plus. So this has been my evaluation of the tanks, the DPS, the healers, the, the certain specs that are doing extremely strong right now. Of course, things are going to change. There's going to be maybe some changes made. Um, there might be some nerves to tears and things like that. But right now, these classes, I feel, and based on the logs that I've seen, based on the Mythic Plus participation, based on Mythic logs, based on some of the Heroic logs, based on the utility that the classes bring, I feel that this list is somewhat a good representation of the OP classes, or the classes that are doing really well. But I have to say this again, if you are not looking to push extremely high progression, both in Mythic Plus dungeons, in raids, it does not affect you. Uh, you do not have to worry about this because just play the class that you really enjoy. The, play the class that you enjoy the rotation, enjoy the, enjoy how they how they work and things like that. Um, this is just a representation of what classes were most used at the top top end. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, leave a comment if you feel if you feel strongly. Otherwise, if you feel other class should be included, I didn't want to cover a lot of the classes. I just covered the ones that I feel are extremely overpowered or extremely strong at the moment. Again, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in my next guide.